Coming up next, the best way to honor our parents. The tongue of the wise. And the life of the author of Proverbs. It is time to begin the book of wisdom called Proverbs. Quick study is on the air. Stay there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Rod Hembrick. I'm Janice. And I'm Corey. And this is the Quick Study Television Program. It is great to have you with us there. I say this every day, but I say it every day because every day we have new viewers, mm -hmm. because people are just discovering that we're around, even though we've been here for 20 years. The truth is that we go through the Bible in one year. So we begin in Genesis in the month of January, and we end, of course, in Revelation in the month of December. Isn't that cool? It's very well, cool. Well, today we're just past the halfway mark, mm -hmm. which puts us in the book of Proverbs. So in a little bit, we're going to talk about this. Proverbs 10 to 12, the best way to honor our parents. Now, what does that mean, honor your parents? Do everything they say? Well, we'll talk about that coming up. Corey? Well, we're going to be examining the author of Proverbs, which is King Solomon, and some of the different aspects of his life. Uh-oh. Yes. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. From a historical perspective. So we're looking at, at royal life and things like okay, that. Okay, all right. So we're not going to focus all on the pagan deities, just no. a little bit. Okay. All right, we have the Bible challenge coming up, which yes, is... Yes, we do. Reading from Proverbs 10 through 12. And according to Proverbs, what does the tongue of the wise promote? Understanding, righteousness, or health? All right, there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, Proverbs talks about the tongue and what we say all through the book. Very, very interesting. So as we continue, Corey will have to answer that, can you? Stay there, Quick Study continues. The Geneva Bible published in Switzerland was the Bible of English exiles. Those who desired to escape the tyranny of the kings and the queens of England used this translation, which was a revision from earlier English Bibles. This was the first English Bible in which scholars translated the Old Testament directly from the original Hebrew language. During this time, biblical Hebrew was being revived from the ancient past. The first colony of exiles from England came to America with the Geneva Bible. Get your Quick Study Pocket Guide, go through the Bible with us. Write P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. In Canada, P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2. We are viewer supported, and if you'd be kind enough to pray about what God would have you do, remember we are supported by gifts from people just like you. Again, P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2. quick study, we begin one of my all-time favorite books in the Old Testament, and that is the book of Proverbs. Now, Proverbs was written largely by famous King Solomon. Solomon was famous for his wisdom. It was like he built these amazing cities of ideas, and he collected the ancient uh, wisdom literature and reinterpreted it through the Holy Spirit of God. And, and it's just an amazing book. It's, it's really the only book that claims right inside of it that it will, when you read its words, will give you direct access to wisdom and knowledge and understanding. So it's very interesting uh, to, to go through and really absorb the ideas that are in Proverbs. But I want to talk a little bit more about the author. 
about King Solomon himself because, like I said, he was famous for building these amazing ideas and, and it being so wise, but he was also famous for physically building up the land of Israel and physically building the cities. So if the Bible says it, we should be able to see it in the archeological record. Take a look. Ambitious kings trying to build in order to secure their kingdoms was not unique to King Solomon. Evidence and inscriptions and boastful stellas can be found in abundance, leaving these long dead kings a mark to speak of their accomplishments that once shaped the land. The Bible speaks to us on behalf of King Solomon, but it is not alone in its claims. Archaeology has revealed to us a synchronized story at least of the architectural prowess of this wise king. His building began in Jerusalem with the temple and with his palace, but quickly it spread out to the rest of the kingdom. Historical work is far from over in the Middle East and much remains to be found, unearthed, discovered. But what archeologists have found, the similar styles, the new form of gateways, the double walls, all of it fit nicely with the picture that the Bible conveys. Proverbs chapter 10 and 12, or 10 through 12, we discover a treasure trove of Solomon's God-given wisdom. Now, this wisdom is presented in the form of pithy sayings and short axioms, which are self-evident truths that apply to just about every area of life. Some of these proverbs come in the form of uh, admonitions or commands upon us how to live, others in the form of results of wisdom. Proverbs 10 to 12 have many varied forms of these sayings. Proverbs 10, verses 1 through 8. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is the grief of his mother. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivers from death. The Lord will not allow the righteous soul to famish, but he casts away the desire of the wicked. He who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. He who gathers in summer is a wise son. He who sleeps in harvest is a son who causes shame. Blessings are on the head of the righteous, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. The memory of the righteous is blessed, but the name of the wicked will rot. The wise in heart will receive commands, but a prating fool will fall. Proverbs chapter 10, verses 1 through 8. When I was challenged as a very young man by one of the best people I've ever met in my entire human life, and that is, of course, Pastor Dave Yanatone. He lives in Florida now. And Pastor Dave challenged me as a young man to read the Bible. He said, read Psalm 1 and Proverbs 1 on the first day of the month. Read Psalm 2 and Proverbs 2 on the second day of the month and so on. And I really wasn't saved. I thought I was saved. And so I did that and I got saved. The Lord convicted me by Psalm 21 and Proverbs 21. The Lord convicted me and I gave my heart to Jesus Christ by reading the Bible that way. Now that's interesting. 100% God had saved me, of course, when I was 8 years old. But I really didn't get serious with God until I was 14. Thank you. Pastor Dave Yanatone, what a good man you are. Well, the word wisdom used in the Proverbs, it doesn't mean the same thing that most of us associate with wisdom, you know, like Yoda or something on Star Wars. No, that's not it. Many in today's world think experience is wisdom. No, that's not it. Many fools have a lot of experience. Now, the wisdom that Proverbs speaks of included the spiritual impact of the material world when considering the direction and the motivation of the same. So wisdom as defined in the Bible means this, spiritual skill necessary 
to navigate actions and reactions to circumstances around you. In other words, if I could put it another way, to be appropriate in righteousness, to be appropriate in situations. In other words, to react to situations in rightness with God. Now that is the skill of wisdom. And that's very different than we hear people talking about wisdom in today's world, especially with all these self-help books that you can buy a dime a dozen at the store or more. Well, Proverbs gives us a totally different take on wisdom, a totally different view. This is wisdom that comes from above, not earthly wisdom. And so today, as we focus, you know, on Proverbs 10, we're going to learn three truths as we look at the Proverbs. Now, over the weekend on the walk, we talked about how to look at the Proverbs. You don't just read them quickly, you know. You focus on them and you meditate on them. Let's take a look at Proverbs 10, verse 1. It says, the Proverbs of Solomon. Now, look what he says. A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is grief to his mother. Now, here is the, the, the first truth to live by. One of the best ways to honor our parents is to become wise in God's wisdom. In other words, the best way that we can honor our parents is to seek for and desire to be the kind of person and have the kind of wisdom and the kind of knowledge and the kind of ability that God wants us and purposed us to have. And so when we do that, we make a glad father and a glad mother. So that it brings honor. Now, what parent do you know when they look at their children, say it's a daughter or a son, and they say, look at how wise he is. Look how powerful he is. He has self-control. He has the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering. And they're proud, and they're like, oh, man, that's my son. You know, that's my daughter. Well, that is honoring your parents. Actually, you're making your parents look good. And so one of the ways you honor your parents, a major way you honor your parents, is by being faithful to God and honoring your Father God by seeking His wisdom and running your life accordingly. We learn all that from one simple verse, but it gets better. Here is Proverbs 10, verse 2. Check this out. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness, well, that's something. Righteousness what? Righteousness delivers from death. Now look at that. There is this, this, this element of deliverance. Now that brings us to this truth to live by. Stealing money in any form releases a spirit of depression and loss and profits nothing. So you know when you, you, know, when you want, when you find uh, a, a, an opportunity to take money from someone, you didn't really work for that money, but you just, you, it's an opportunity to take it from someone. Uh, well that releases a spirit of greed and a spirit of I want, I'm taking, of envy. But you know, when you, when you work hard and you become the kind of worker God wants you to be and, and you're doing it with all your heart, acknowledging him in all your ways, you're, you're working hard and then the prophet comes to you, you release and inspire not only a good work ethic, but when people see how God rewards you, they're going to want to do the same thing. They're going to ask you what your secret is. And so here in verse 2 of Proverbs 10 is another amazing truth showing us that there is a spiritual side to our personal economies and there is a spiritual side to corporate economies. Now let's go to Proverbs 10, verse 3. Watch this. The Lord will not allow the righteous soul to be famished. Now look at that. But he will cast away the desires of the wicked. Notice here it says this very interesting point. Our needs will always be filled by seeking God First, now listen carefully, but our desires will never be satisfied when we ignore Christ. Boy, this is intense because so many times in today's world, we have substituted needs for wants. See, there's your needs and there's your wants. And we say, well, God, we really need the 68-inch widescreen television. I mean, the 50 inch is too small. Lord, we need it. No, you don't. What you need is your daily bread. What you need is to be empowered to help missionaries. What you need is to be able to pay your bills. That's a very different story than your wants. All of this from three verses in Proverbs.
Over the next few weeks on this quick study program, we're gonna be exploring the book of Proverbs. Now, that is a very exciting prospect because Proverbs is a book, a collection of wisdom literature, ancient wisdom literature, in which the truth literally transcends time. Today, in our modern culture, we can understand what was written thousands, literally, of years ago. Now, what I want to do right now is actually take a look more at the time period of the author of the book of Proverbs. Now, we talked earlier that the author of Proverbs is King Solomon. Now, it's interesting that he is a king, and it's also very significant because he's in, uh, yes, a, a place of privilege and a place of power, but he is also in a place of, of great, uh, really, corruption that it could be corrupted. And uh, some very great difficulties went along with being a royal. So right now, we're going to take a look at ancient palace life. Being an ancient king was not an easy job. You had to run a city, command an army, defend a city, and watch out for enemies, even your own family or servants who might try to overthrow you. This happened routinely. And often when one king was overthrown, his entire family and sometimes close friends would be murdered to prevent an uprising or any future claim to the throne. This type of event even happened in ancient Israel. It's recorded for us in the Bible. But there are at least two records of kings who went against this norm of their society. One is in the Bible, King David, and the other was a Hittite king, King Telepinu. Both these men refused to execute the rest of the former king's family. Instead, they actually searched them out and were kind to them. They even established protection for the former royal family, just in case anyone would try to kill them. Life is substantially different when humans try to get back to God's ways. Quick Study TV presents Good Friends Fellowship Sunday services with the teaching of the word, great worship and fellowship in the chat room. You're invited to join Pastor Rod and Janice online at Good Friends Fellowship every Sunday. Services begin at 11 a.m. Eastern at www.biblediscoverytv.com. Remember to follow the links to Good Friends Church Services. Quick Study Television and Bible Discovery TV present a TV special called Cultures and Creeds on DVD. Corey and Ryan Hembry examined the ancient cultures in the Bible and the creeds they respected in order to understand the context and the spiritual mood in which the Bible figures encountered God. Cultures and Creeds with Corey and Ryan Hembry brings you ancient history, Bible archaeology, stunning revelations about the way in which God confronted every culture and creed in every generation throughout time. This is part two in a 12-part TV series just out of the edit suite. Discover just how relevant the Bible really is today by understanding how God encountered the past generations. To receive your own DVD TV special called Cultures and Creeds, we suggest a donation of $20 or more. You can write with your donation to P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2. In the United States, you can write to P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 156680150. To call with a credit card, 1-519-940-8338 or 724-733-8336. Oceans are critical to planet Earth's survival. 
Until recently, it was thought that the world's oceans were fed only by rain and the atmosphere. There was never any safe way really to explore the depths of the ocean because of the intense pressure and darkness that exist at those levels. But in 1970, a new technology developed that helped scientists explore the depths of the deep. They discovered that much of the water in the ocean comes from deep springs. But did you know that over 2,000 years ago, the Bible already revealed this secret? In a rhetorical question to the man Job, God asked in Job 38, 16, Job, have you entered the springs and the depths of the sea or searched out the deep places of the ocean? Is the word of God. And wherever you can, you need to check out those people who are claiming to be anointed. 1 Timothy chapter 3 gives you the requirements for a preacher, a pastor, or a spiritual leader. Mm -hmm. And those requirements are very stringent. So look at what Paul says to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 3. Very good answer, very good question. Thank you. And as you requested, I left your name anonymous. Now let's take a look at a clip from Bible Investigators. Here it is. Spirit of loss, not profit. Now the waves of the economy are unpredictable, but they are not as powerful as the undercurrent of men and women who drive the economy. There is a spiritual side to the economies of the nations. And the question is, which spirit? Stealing and loss or being fruitful and multiplying? That's the question. Now God says to humanity, be fruitful and multiply. God says, protect in Genesis, protect the planet and the earth from evil. And so we have a choice. And oftentimes we make our, our, uh, our best um, vote, if you would, or action in giving because we love to an altar or a church, altar meaning a church, mm -hmm. an altar, a church, or a ministry that teaches the gospel message and the word of God as the word of God and the gospel as Jesus Christ, the only begotten son, that releases a, a kind of uh, spiritual atmosphere that affects us. And those principles are true in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so we take a lesson from that. All right, Bible uh, challenge is what? Well, according to Proverbs, what does the tongue of the wise promote? Understanding, righteousness, or health? Now this is a hard one. It's because at it's different tricky. times mm -hmm. in the Proverbs, different things are said. But that being said, I think I'm going to go with health. Well, let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18. You're getting the high sign from, from your dad over I there. Am. Proverbs 12, 18 <laughs> says, There is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. Good job. Very good, Corey. It was Corey. the piercing of the sword part. <laughs> yes. It's yeah. the opposite. So you did so. so good with that one. I'm going to give you another question, uh -oh. okay? And this one comes in from our email, one of our blogs. Okay. Okay, here's the question. It's on the screen, and it says, Someone said, only anointed, inspired messages of God will be instilled in people's hearts. But, you know, I've been hurt, Rod, by what I thought was somebody inspired. How do we tell what anointing is real and what isn't? Basically, this was a conversation I was having with someone. So a lot of people are claiming anointing and inspired. How do you tell the difference between a real and false? Corey, well, what do you think? again, you have to know the word and you have to know the character of God as revealed in the Bible because that's what's going to help you make the decision. Is this, a, is this of God or is this not of God? And the same goes with evaluating your spiritual teachers, the teachers of the word. You need to take a look at their lives, take a look at what they're saying and see if it adds up with the word of God or if it doesn't. If it doesn't add up, up, there's a problem there so make sure that you put uh, more emphasis always always more emphasis on what you know for sure is the Word of God and wherever you can you need to check out those people who are claiming to be anointed first Timothy chapter 3 gives you the requirements for a preacher a pastor or a spiritual leader mm -hmm. and those requirements are very stringent so look at what Paul says to Timothy in first Timothy chapter 3 very good answer very good question thank you and as you requested, I left your name anonymous. Now let's take a look at a clip from Bible Investigators. Here it is. The New Testament writers were no strangers to submission. On more than one occasion, the apostles found themselves bound in chains and beaten for the name of Jesus Christ. And all but one of them were killed for their Savior. Paul wrote to the church in Rome, 
I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. service. Now, what on the earth was Paul talking about? This subject and more being tackled on Bible Investigators at www.biblediscoverytv.com. Go to Bible Investigators at www.biblediscoverytv.com. Bible Investigators occurs on Sunday nights. That's when we record it at about 8.30 live on BibleDiscoveryTV.com. When you're there, we also do a discussion time. You can join us on the computer, on the chat room. We have a good time. Mm -hmm. Also, it is on, believe it or not, Bible Discovery TV archived. You can watch all of them. It's amazing, this site, Bible Discovery TV. I mean, you just go on there and there's all this stuff. And you know what? Bible Discovery TV is exactly the same ministry as Quick Study TV. We pay for it all. And we are able to do that because partners like you are faithful. And if you've never been a partner or never ever thought about giving, I want to ask you something. There is no gift too small. There is no gift too large. Whatever God speaks to your heart. And so whatever you do, make sure that you do it. Would you pray? That's what I'm asking you to do. And ask about becoming a supporter of this ministry. We need supporters right now. And we're looking for 200 people in the next two months to stand with us and say, I'll give a dollar, I'll give five, I'll give 10, 25, whatever the Lord speaks to your heart, some will give more. But pray about participating. Don't just sit there. Pray about participating. I encourage you to do that. We do need to hear from you on this day. So would you do that? Thank you in advance, and I trust the work of the Holy Spirit in you. Speaking of which, let's join forces with these folks who've written in with their prayer request. Watch and pray. We've talked today about words and they are a powerful thing. I want to tell you some powerful words. The Bible says in the book of John, 1 John to be exact, if we confess our sin, our failings, our failures, our falling short to Jesus, then he is faithful and just, not only to forgive us of our sins, but to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, to give us a fresh start. Now let me ask you a question. Do you need a fresh start today in your life? I have good news for you. Jesus Christ is your fresh start. You can pray and say, Jesus, I need a fresh start. I've messed it up, but I believe you died on the cross and rose again to give me a fresh start. I take you as my Lord. Come to Jesus today. Get a fresh start and start over with him in control instead of you. Thank you for joining us as we began and worked through Proverbs today. And if you're watching on the internet, I want to encourage you. Thank you for doing so. But I want to encourage you to consider supporting the internet. You can do so by giving any amount. Go to the donate button at BibleDiscoveryTV.com and join us. Help us to stay on the internet today. Thank you.